I paint what I see, the things I see at any hour of any day. When I lived in the city, I painted crowds and city streets, houses with city people in them. When I lived in a country village, I painted the elevators and water tank, the stores, the village street, the big barns and the square red houses in the country nearby. I've seen pictures as I raised the canoe over my head at a portage. I sat down on the side of a hill, partly sheltered, and looked at it for an hour or so. Figured it all out, even to the details of the foliage on two maple trees. Then I painted it quickly. Each painting is done in a single operation. Everything is planned and the color prepared, brushes charged, the paper is wet all over with a large brush. The painting is all done before the paper dries, three or four minutes, and not touched again. The main color is not used to sharply define shapes. This makes it possible to apply color very freely and so give it more kick. The more freely color is applied, the more effective it is. The effective colors of children's paintings comes from the freedom with which they apply it. A few years ago I was in Toronto for a week without much to do and without the material for picture painting. So I spent some time in the public library. There I found two interesting books. One was about snow crystals with many photographs. I made small pencil drawings. So the snow crystal shapes were the starting point of a picture, snow in Bethlehem. The progression from crystals to winter to Christmas to Bethlehem was easy. I had embarked on a fantasy. Since I started in at cloud business, I have made hundreds of pencil sketches, usually for use immediately in painting, but sometimes without any idea of using them. The rapid changes in clouds. The thing is gone and forgotten before you get the oil medium going. I gradually change towards line and larger areas of flat color. For a long time, brilliant colors. Then, the increasing interest in line sustained ever since, and a turning to black and white values. I seem to have an incurable itch to separate things, to divide pictures into blank and worked over areas. I got into the habit of calling such blank areas dazzle spots or bands or areas, a violent motif. The requirements of a dazzle area are two. It must be sharply in contrast with the rest of the picture and it must be without interest in itself. Its purpose is merely to quickly engage the attention and then release it in the detailed part of the picture. The thing that makes a picture is the thing that makes dynamite, compression. <laughs>